So as, as this is the first video and the first class, we need to know how and where to find the links and how to navigate through the links to have the better view about this course. So just click on your Blackboard course shell of this um, intro to machine intelligence. Click on the announcements. And in the announcement, first read the welcome to course announcement posted already and read it thoroughly to have um, an idea about how are we going to conduct this class, um, how to submit the assignments, how to communicate with each other and the instructor that is with me, where to find the class lectures, videos and what is the book. Oh, I cannot highlight it here. So this is the provided book for it. And uh, again, in addition to that, for this course, you need to install uh, the software tool, the package that is Jupyter Notebook. You may also use Anaconda Spider, but most of the videos, in my most of the videos, you will see Jupyter Notebook. So you need to install it in your own system. Uh, I have posted some of the videos how to install it, but still, if you face an issue, Please don't hesitate, hesitate to contact the um, IT at um, in your campus. Okay, you should find a phone number or email ID um, of IT of Eastern Connecticut State University. So don't hesitate to con contact them. It it should be easier to install it through the video that I provided. Okay, so this is the announcement part. After that, go to the syllabus additional in, uh, additional instructions. Here you will find the syllabus. Read it thoroughly. What is provided? What are the guidelines for grading? Um, your course schedule, or all those things are provided in the um, syllabus. You will also find the book information as well. And uh, here, see, this is the Python installation instruction. You need to see you need to follow all this instruction provided in this pdf um, for successfully installing python in your pc and how to see you need python you need uh, jupyter notebook if you have spider also that will help you these are all programming environments or the ides available for python programming now here see i have provided three links to install Python 3.7.4 version on Windows, okay, it's specifically for Windows. And see if you have iOS, MacBook, so you need to look for uh, the installation videos, it should be in the YouTube. As I have a Windows PC, uh, it was easier for me to follow this link, okay, so that's why I just provided here. If you don't have Windows, some other uh, operating systems, please. Try, it, uh, try to look for it in the YouTube. Then how to install Python with Anaconda, Jupyter Notebook Spider. See, if you install Anaconda in the same package when it gets, uh, okay, let me open it through. Uh, yes, here. Yeah. See, when I installed Anaconda, see this folder here, it's Anaconda 364 bits. So when you install it, by default, it will give you this Anaconda PowerShell prompt, the command prompt, like you have the command prompt in your uh, PC or laptop. So it has its own Anaconda prompt. See, when there are many packages uh, that you need to install for uh, working um, in this Anaconda for our course. So at any certain point of time, let's say you are run, you don't have a particular package which is needed in the program. You need to install it through this prompt, not your system's command prompt. Get it? Then this is your Jupyter notebook. Okay. The, I, most of the time I'm, I will be using this one. Then I do have, you will also have the spider and the conda as well. There are many integrated development environments available through Anaconda. So we, I will be mostly using Jupyter Notebook. And if you want to uh, run standalone program or course, you can uh, run it through Spider as well. Okay. So that's all about the installation. 
yeah and uh, see this jupiter notebook tutorial how to do the i mean the instruction the setup how to work through i mean how to run the code how to write the code all those details are provided in this link so thoroughly go through all the links and install it in your pc mostly i'm emphasizing on jupyter notebook now once you have that you need to come to course contained assignments and uh, here um, you will first find this machine intelligence intro, intro to ppt what is machine intelligence uh, what are the real world applications of it all of these you will find in the ppt and using the same ppt this is the video explanation provided by me so click on this either you can go through the ppt read it on your own or uh, you can just watch the video explanation of it next here um, i have this unit one so in the unit one there are three files available so using these three file uh, three files one two and three first is your introductory jupyter notebook then the notebook pynb the jupyter notebook extension is ipynb and the third one is about variables expression these are the basics of python programming so i'm just uh, going to navigate through all of them through my video lecture so first in um, download all these files and in the video lectures i will be helping you how to execute the jupyter notebook file all these three files so after that what i'm going to do um, see i'm going to close it okay let me show you how to open it i'm closing this closing this so from your start menu in the anaconda you need to open this jupyter notebook so when this prompt opens it tracks all of your activity log here so now wherever you have um, where is that yeah this three files you know try to navigate to those files using um, this uh, page so it should have uh, all the paths to your all the um, directories available here those three files i have stored in documents i'm going to documents code uh, this one machine intelligence so here this is my first file which file this first file introductory jupyter notebook so open it this is how you do it it's it's really easy so once it opens like this what are you supposed to do either you have it in this format correct so if you want to run each of these cells individually you need to click the cell and run it okay either you can do that but if you want to run them at once if you have a pre provided like a fully uh, developed script jupyter notebook script you can just restart and run all okay and restart and run all cells so it will run everything and give you the output as needed <coughs> let me just clear it and do it again it will be easier for you to learn this way so see now these are the cells correct so individually this cell so these are the comments and these are the comment lines that i have added for understanding so now you want to run it so restart and run all it will run everything and give you the outputs as needed so let's start with this so quick introduction to python programming so before learning machine intelligence you should be familiar to python programming because machine intelligence is performed using a programming language called python programming okay so these are just the basics about it so let's say you want to print an information in the screen okay um, so how to do that you need to write this instruction print and what do you want to print hello world exclamation mark in the output so when you run it it will give you this output so here this is the output okay now can you do one thing can you print your own name so how to do that in the print statement in the single quotation marks just add your name okay complete it and submit this file in the blackboard or, or just practice it you don't have to submit it just um, practice it on your own 
you can just simply write your uh, code here like this print um, let's say my name is Soumya I'm just going to run it and see here it's printed Soumya so like that you just um, run it on your own now uh, let's say we want to output multiple values using the print by separating them by commas correct so x is a variable what is a variable again we will go into that is a variable assigned with 3 so now I want to print the value of x as 3 so how to print it this is is it's to be printed so here this is the print statement for it in the single quotation mark print the message then the value <clears throat> then when you run it it will give you this output now next let me do one thing let me clear it it will be easier to go step by step so that you will see um, all the output at once yeah now more printing op options so see uh, so there is a sep keyword uh, which is used to separate each object so let's say you want to separate the abc by a hyphen um, okay so when you run it it should give you this output now you want to print uh, let's say in this way there is a, like save there is another one keyword end so end uh, what it does actually let me show you if, if we, i have these two statements only here see i have another two statement but they have been commented out by using a pound sign preceding it so if you mention like this with the comments they are not going to be executed they are inactive now and these are my active comments so when i run it see how it printed abc in one line and then in the next line D, correct? So now I'm commenting out these two and uh, running these two, okay? So when I run it, see what happened? A, B, C, now next you have end, okay? Equal to uh, single quotation marks. So when it's your D, there is a end statement like this. It took the D from the next line and printed it just after the last character of uh, the first print statement okay so this is the difference okay and then now values separated by spaces by default so if you put any uh, variables or messages in single quotation marks with commas separating them then they will it will add a space in between them by default if you don't want to space uh, mention space in between the values how to do that so this is the way to write it these are different ways of writing the print statements now why do we use variables and how to store information in it so uh, if you have taken other programming courses you must have um, seen there are different types of data types int float string list okay these are the different types elaborately we are going to see them in the later in our uh, other sections of this course okay so i'm starting with this here um, these are two variables and you are just adding them so num1 has four num2 has five after adding them it gives us the result nine see it's so easy now let's say welcome variable will have hello so it see the comment store the string hello in the variable welcome so when i do that now welcome has hello mm. so now next uh, here see this is a list this is a variable and this is a list which has three values in it okay and now when i print it like this it will give me all the list elements here this is a list of strings and this is to store the string hello in a variable welcome now if i want to iterate over the values in a list let's say i have these three values here right i want to go through each of them individually how to do that there is a loop again this is another one important construct in python programming so it should print in this way let me run it so the words are okay so for each word in the list words this one okay in this list 
it will print each individual verb with have a, having a space uh, before all the words. Correct? Understood? <clears throat> now, after learning the um, basics of programming, we are going to switch over to natural language processing in further in the chapters. What is natural language processing? We will see um, how to process a set of uh, lines or statements and how to extract meaningful information from them. That is your natural language processing. Okay. Here see, <coughs> sorry about that. We are uh, importing here see, there are many packages in Python um, library and uh, in each of the package they have the predefined inbuilt functions that we should use. So that is why we are using requests because requests is going to use the get function. This is going to get the file in this uh, URL provided, gutenberg.org. So when I run this, see, it got this file um, details from 55.txt. It got this details from the gutenberg to, to cross check it, this one. You can take this URL directly, paste it in your URL in your own browser and see whether you have this text or not. It's magic, right? So now we have extracted the text using another one package PC. I'm going to load um, this, um, you know, this structure or section of the text and let's see what happens to this code. It won't be meaningful to explain you everything here, whatever I have. So here it is supposed to process the text that it got from here. And um, after processing it, see what happened. It is going to render all the document uh, values. I mean, uh, these are the highlighted tags available. Okay, which whatever is highlighted, that details are provided like this. It looks like kind of a web, uh, web page, right? So now let's say you want to create a list of tokens that are identified as a person. Now again, we are um, extracting some meaningful uh, information using the natural language processing. You don't have to go to the detail of it. So when I run it, see, it's going to list a number of tokens, whatever important segments or words present, how many times they are being repeated. That is explained here. <coughs> now, if using all these words, I want to um, create a word cloud, like a graph. How to do that? We are going to import the word cloud from the word cloud library. When I run it, it will give me this type of uh, graph where it includes all the tokens from here. Okay, it's interesting, correct? This is how uh, the Jupyter notebook is being processed and how you can run them at once. All the cells, you can run them at once or individually go one by one to understand it. 